Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Friday mountain weather update. All right, my first stop is northern Idaho up at Schweitzer Ski Area, and this is the kind of thing we're seeing at a number of resorts where the air temperature at the base is above freezing, but once you reach mid-mountain higher towards the summit, the air temps below freezing, and that's the case at Schweitzer, and you've got snow coming down. Your snow will be intensifying um, as the, uh, the morning and the day wears on because here's radar. You can see the precipitation rolling in your direction towards northern uh, northern Idaho out of uh, Washington State. You've got rain, snow in the Pacific Northwest, and some of the snow levels have come down to lower elevations across the Cascades and the high volcanoes um, because I'll tell you, the preceding days were exceptionally warm with some record highs. Um, you've got rain, snow rolling up into BC as well. Let's go to the northeast. Um, storm system, uh, a clipper rolling in your direction. That'll be an interesting setup with a mix of precipitation, including some ice. Um, take a look at that coming up. Here's water vapor across the west in the mid levels. Oranges and reds are going to be your drier air moistures, and the whites and the blues. So you've got a big storm system here and a wave um, that kind of broke off from that low moving through. Um, you can, I mean, you can see the moisture in the mid levels there. So that'll be moving into Utah um, a little bit later today, tonight, and tomorrow, and then Colorado as well, late tonight, tomorrow, uh, and probably into the uh, the thirtieth uh, as well. And then you've got this stream of moisture that's kind of loading up out here in the Pacific. That, and I'll show you the jet stream forecast, that will become a much more active pattern, flow pattern for the West that first week of April. So there's a lot of little things to, to kind of point out in this forecast update. Here's my uh, snow timeline, best odds of snow for Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, the Pacific Northwest, Tahoe, and the Northeast. So for example, in the Wasatch, you've got some light snow accumulation uh, coming in late today and then moderate to heavy tomorrow, with that wave I pointed out. And then heavy again, 331 into 42. In Colorado, you've got some light to moderate snow coming in late tonight into tomorrow, and then moderate to heavy, 41 and 42. In the Northeast, uh, between 329 and 331, it's going to be heavy precip, but it's going to be a mix. Rain at a lot of the base areas, maybe even ice and then potentially snow at the very highest of elevations. And then rain, plain old rain, 4.3 and 4.4 4 coming in to a lot of the northeast. Okay, let me show you uh, a time height forecast. This is for Star Pass in Colorado, western Colorado, between Crested Butte and Aspen. I talked about the Grand Traverse. It starts midnight Saturday this weekend and, can, and and finishes at around noon on Sunday. Starts in Crested Butte, goes over Star Pass, finishes on Aspen Mountain. Um, so there is going to be some snow. You'll probably wake up Saturday morning in Crested Butte to one to three inches of accumulation, um, especially up on Mount Crested Butte. Then the snow gets a little bit lighter. And by the time you start the race, you might have an inch or two accumulating with 25 to 35 mile per hour wind gusts. Over Star Pass, maybe an inch of additional accumulation, and then it turns drier towards the finish of that race on Aspen Mountain. But plan on 25 to 35 mile per hour wind gust, especially once you get up into the higher terrain above tree line, 35 mile per hour gusts. And then it's actually a pretty warm finish on the top of Aspen Mountain. Um, uh, it'll be a cold night in the single digits, but then by the time you finish, it'll be much warmer. All right, let's look at the jet stream forecast starting this today. So there's our jet stream kind of supporting the big storm up in the Pacific Northwest. And then there's that little wave that's going to pass through Utah, Wyoming, Colorado tonight into tomorrow. Let me put this into motion. All right, here's, so here's Saturday. You can see the dip in the jet over a lot of Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. And I'm looking, these are winds up at 30,000 feet, jet stream level winds. The higher wind speeds are in the yellows, oranges, and reds. All right, there's Sunday, and, and there's, there's an area of low pressure that may spin up across the eastern plains of Colorado, throwing some moisture back over Denver in the Front Range. This looks like it could be uh, some decent rain for Denver in the Front Range while the foothills and the mountains get snow. 
and then that storm pulls out into the plains with a shot of severe weather for the heartland. Now behind it, there's another little kink coming into the west coast. Um, there's Monday, um, and then on Tuesday, there's your flow. Now by the time we get into Wednesday, look at the big storm system coming off the Pacific, rolling towards the west coast into Thursday, and also Friday, then it moves in. So that's a storm system. And then that moves through the Rockies as well. Okay, let's talk about snow accumulation over time. All right, on this, your light blues are going to be your lightest accumulations under three inches. Greens are three to six, yellow six plus, reds 10 plus. Most of the actions up in the Pacific Northwest. <clears throat> A little bit for the Tetons. All right, here's early on Saturday, March 29th. Storm system rolling through Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana. Look at the snow accumulation in Colorado, especially up on top of the Continental Divide. Loveland, A Basin, Winter Park, Longs Peak, Cameron Pass. Again, mainly rain for Denver, 5280 and the Eastern Plains. And there might be a little bit of snow that mixes in over the Palmer Divide in the foothills. All right, here's early on uh, Sunday, March 30th. Second wave coming in through Colorado, Wyoming, and then that moves out. And then a new storm hits uh, California, Oregon, Idaho, the Tetons. This is midday on Monday, March 31st. And then that storm dives into Utah and Colorado, especially the central and northern mountains of Colorado. This is early on Tuesday, April 1st. And then that storm moves out. So a little bit of leftover snow on the backside. This is early on Thursday, April 3rd. A little bit of snow moving through Colorado. Here's early Friday, April 4th. There's Saturday, April 5th. And there's Sunday, April 6th. All right, my forecast as far as uh, numbers, all the way through 4-2, so the 2nd of April, 1 to 2 feet potentially for the Wasatch. Again, this runs all the way out through 4-2, so we're talking about at least two or three different storm systems rolling through that area. In Colorado, the biggest numbers are in the central to northern mountains, 8 to 16 inches, less south, uh, anywhere from 12 to 16 up there across the Tetons. And some pretty good numbers right around Big Sky and Bridger Bowl. There's a little bit of a bullseye around there that I was detecting. Tens up through Whitefish, Discovery. Uh, 10 to 12 through a lot of Idaho. Again, the problem with some of these areas are the base, base area temps, which are warm. So you got to be higher up. And that's the case through a lot of interior BC. Looking at the temps this morning, they were above freezing at a lot of the base areas. So you're going to have to be higher up to get these 12s. In the Pacific Northwest, 10 to 20. And some decent numbers through Tahoe up towards Shasta, potentially a couple of feet there. Now, up in the northeast, dealing with significant rain, snow, ice, so it's very elevation dependent. You're going to have to be pretty high up to get four to eight inches of accumulation through upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Otherwise, you're going to be in the mix. All right, guys, we'll end on the big western map here through 4-2. Still some good numbers. But the key this time of the year is that <laughs> with the warmer temps flooding a lot of the west in between storm systems, you really have to be higher up on the mountain to get the better snow totals. And that's why we're for that's why I forecast mid mountain and higher most of the time. All right, guys, take care. Appreciate you tuning in here and have a great day.